feel like I'm really known, I guess, for just kind of like telling it how it is, especially when it comes to things I don't like, but I do want to keep everything balanced, I guess. So today I wanted to do something a little bit different. Welcome to Anxiety Ave. My name is Gypsy and if you have not already done so, I hope you will stick around long enough to subscribe. So a lot of people that know me know how much my mother gets on my nerves and with good reason as those of you who have watched my previous videos probably already know. However, it wasn't all bad growing up with my mom because there were some positive things that she kind of passed down to us that I think are important to note. So with that in mind, I think that it is only fair to go over a couple of lessons that I've actually learned from my mother and that have helped me throughout my existence. Maybe some of this will help somebody, something relatable. They're not in any particular order of importance. I'm just going to throw them out there. So one of the things I learned from her was to play dumb. I know that sounds insane. My mom, she's really smart, but I, I feel like she's got autism too, but like she doesn't really understand what it is. So she would never actually admit that, right? Um, or even like go get herself checked out. But anyways, something that people who have autism do a lot is they tend to like hyper focus on things and some people who have it they have really really high iqs like they're really smart even geniuses but they don't have the social and emotional iq necessary to just blend into society without some help so i don't know exactly what she based this advice on but if but based on my own experience as an adult i realized that when i show people my actual potential like at work for example it intimidates a lot of the people who Will like work with me that have been there longer than I have because I'll get to the level where I'm like surpassing them in skill or ability or customer service and like standing out too much but not because I'm trying to it's just that's just my normal work ethic you know but that will really intimidate people and I live in America like it's just what it is here I know people don't like to believe it but it happens and especially when I work in environments where there's a lot of white people white women they get super super intimidated by me when they see my potential so I have to dumb myself down a lot when I'm around those people and you would be amazed at how differently they treat me like if I don't seem like I know what's going on if I seem like I need help if I seem like I need them to explain things to me all the time they love me they're so ready to just jump in and help and show me things that they probably wouldn't normally show me if they knew that I really comprehended that stuff and I could apply it to other things in my life. But because they don't find me as a threat, they'll just show me that stuff. That's actually how I increased a lot of my experience when it comes to like business and stuff like that because people would just accidentally show me things so they thought that I was too stupid to understand what was really going on. I learned how to run businesses that way. <laughs> and if I came at them like, hey, you know, I have this type of mindset and these are my goals and this is what I'm trying to achieve in my life and here's what I can bring to the table and I really like talk myself up and and actually show that hands on like if they see me doing that stuff initially they, they'll they act like they're impressed but they'll start to like hate on me I guess you know what I'm saying like those do things to sabotage me actively and this has happened to me many many times at jobs where I'll start off playing dumb and then gradually over time just you know accidentally all my skills will start to come out and then it'll be problems after that. So it seems like it's so backwards, but I don't know what it is. I don't know why people are like this. It's a psychological thing. I think people's egos get in the way and they don't want people around them to be doing better than them. And especially in like retail, for example, a lot of the managers at those jobs, they don't have any credentials to run those businesses. Like they didn't go to college for it. Even if they did go to college, a lot of times they don't have like the people skills. They don't know the company that well. They don't know um, the departments that well but they'll get those jobs because they'll take some personality tests which basically sees if you're a psychopath and <laughs> pass those tests and like that's how they'll get those jobs even though somebody like me might run the department better those people will have the managerial titles and the pay just because they are part of the the group they're part of the system they'll just do things the way that everybody wants them to do things and not question anything whereas somebody like me who thinks critically 
we might assess a situation and be like, okay, this would be better if I implemented this marketing strategy, if I implemented this um, networking strategy, and I'll be ready to execute those things. I'll be doing those things on my own that will make me a target, you see? I've learned over the years um, that that piece of advice actually has helped and does work. If you seem like you are this grand person that is able to do all these different things, but you don't have credentials to back it up, like you're just a naturally smart person, it's super difficult to navigate day-to-day -day regular people atmosphere. If you're trying to become a doctor, of course, that's completely insane to play dumb when you're a doctor. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. You got to use some common sense. But for like a just a layman, a regular person, the average person is not that smart. So for whatever reason, when smarty pants comes along, it's like a huge threat for some people who have the kinds of positions and jobs where they know that like this is the best I can do. From my level of education and experience in life, this is the best. I cannot really aspire to anything more than this without applying myself more, and I'm not willing to do that, so I don't want anyone to take this from me. Those are the people that you have to play dumb with. How do you play dumb? I mean, a lot of it is just being quiet, not talking so much, just observing when you're around people. Even if you know something, not saying, oh yeah, I already knew that. Oh no, I already do that. You're just literally just nodding and smiling and saying, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, okay, I'll try that out. And actually someone did that to me <laughs> at my <laughs> one of my previous jobs and I was like training her and I thought she didn't know anything. I thought she was a teenager, she wasn't talking and she was just smiling and saying, oh, thank you for showing me that, right? Come to find out this girl has a bachelor's degree she is not a teenager, obviously, she's an adult, and she already had like eight years experience doing the work that I was training her to do before. And like, she turned down a managerial position at her older job because um, it was like clashing with her schedule for school or something at the time. So she was better at the job than I was. And needless to say, when I asked her, I said, why did you let me just explain all this stuff to you without correcting me or stepping in and being like, yeah, I already know that stuff because I'm new to this job. Like, I'm not trying to be bossy. And she was like, no, you can learn something from everyone. So there was no need for me to interject and say I already knew that stuff because I wanted to hear if you were going to tell me something different than what I already knew. And if I had told you, yeah, I already know that, then maybe you wouldn't have told me more. So I was just listening. And she was like, no, you're not boss. You're just doing your job. I was so impressed, you know. And then after that, I started, like, telling her, uh, like, every time I would be trained, because I was being trained as a manager um, at that company and everything new I would learn, I would pass it down to her. I would teach her how to do those things too. And eventually she actually surpassed me and went on to be promoted to a higher position than I ultimately got to at that company. I was like really happy about that because she deserved it, you know? So that's a situation where somebody could use that skill and it worked for them, even though she did it to me. <laughs> The next thing I want to get into is the advice of don't cut people off permanently. And with this bit, okay, this is going to sound kind of strange. So my mom has this philosophy that you can use anyone. Like everybody can be of some use to you in some way. So even if there are people that get on your nerves, they don't necessarily walk the same walk as you. They don't have the same religion as you. They're not the same race as you. You make friends with as many different kinds of people as possible. And then keep those friends, keep those communications open as long as possible because you just never know when someone may be able to be of some use to you, right? For example, like I hear a lot of people say things like, oh, if this person doesn't agree with me, I'm going to just cut them off. Oh, if this person doesn't like what I said, I'm going to just cut them off. And they're like very quick to cut people out of their lives because they don't have the same political views. They don't have the same parenting views, just day-to-day -day life issues. They don't stand in alignment with each other. So they will just cut those people out of their lives. And my mom doesn't do that. She's got friends that are like, first of all, she's got a, a diverse community of friends. She's got friends that are like millionaires and she's got friends that are living in tents on the street but then she also has friends that are black white pakistani like all these different races and she tries to like learn a little bit about all of their cultures and what this does is she creates this network of people every town she goes to like my mom moves around a lot she never really struggles to find resources because she has so many local friends that people are willing to tell her, give her information. And also she's got all these friends. She also plays dumb. Like she doesn't 
act like she knows everything when she's around them. She'll be like, oh, honey, I'm new to the area. I don't know anybody. I don't know anything. Where's a nice church that I can go to? You know, she'll do stuff like that and network. And then she's shameless. Like if she needs any kind of help with anything, even like filling out a job application, she'll just go find her friends and convince them to help her with stuff. She, she never has owned a car since we've moved to America. It's like been over like I don't know, like 20 years maybe. She doesn't even have a license, but she always has a ride to get to places that she wants to go to. She doesn't use Uber. She doesn't do any of that stuff. And she always has resources. In her mind, you know, it's like, even if people don't always live the way I live or do what I do, I can still communicate with them and have some type of relationship with them. They're not all her best friends. They're not eating lunch every day together or going hiking, but... She just keeps those lines open with people and is friendly to people so that they feel a connection with her and they will help her in some way. And she kind of does this with guys too. Like she never doesn't have a boyfriend. She's always got a boyfriend. And no matter how little money that guy makes, I'm telling you, she always figures out a way where like they're paying for her entire lifestyle and every dime she makes, she can go save and save and save. So even though she's not rich in the sense of like, she doesn't make, she doesn't have a high income, but she's got money saved up in case she needs it for something. Like she's never going to be in an emergency she can't get out of because she knows how to build her her resources up and like save. That's something that I have not mastered. <laughs> and it's harder to do that when you have children to take care of. So like my mom, she's like, I say she's single. I mean, she, she dates people, but she doesn't have, she doesn't have any dependents. So it's easier for her to do that now. That's something that she was even able to do at all because she used these rules that she um implements that she taught us to have actually this is probably the biggest thing on this list that has actively been in use for me my entire adult life which is that life is unpredictable so become adjustable that's something i learned from my mother early 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 on not only through her telling me to do this but also watching her do it this is absolutely one of the things that my mom lives you guys ever hear the story about when, when the Great Depression happened, there were people that had survived Titanic, <laughs> survived the Titanic. When they got back to their regular lives, later on, the Great Depression happened and the people who had lost investments in those, uh, in the stock market going down, who had survived the Titanic, committed suicide. <laughs> Not a lie, look this up, okay? This is a real thing. You know why they did that? Because surviving the Titanic was just animal instinct. That's just normal. Anyone in that situation would try to live. So even though that happened to them, they figured out a way to kind of like, not get over it, but they were able to function afterwards because they went back to their regular lives, you know? their bodies were gonna drown, their lifestyle wasn't, but they were so used to their regular lives and, and probably a lot of people were just brought up in that, that when the stock market crashed and they lost everything they had, I mean, it's all, all those people didn't lose 100% of their assets, come on. If you have money to put into the stock market, you have something, you know what I'm saying? But that's a lot of money to lose. So even though they probably still had their homes, they probably still had their vehicles, they probably still had money saved up in the bank, they probably still had an income. The reality of what they had potentially lost and might never get back hit them hard. And the reality of changing their lifestyle, maybe I can't live in this house, maybe I cannot afford these car payments anymore. This is um, affecting jobs. I mean, I have this job for very long, they cut my hours, whatever. That stress finally got to those people and they ended up killing themselves because they could not adjust so this is an extreme, you know, example that I'm giving you, but over the years, life has been extremely unpredictable for me anyway. I feel like, isn't it like that for everyone? I mean, to a degree, but depending on who you are, those degrees may vary extremely. And if you cannot find a way to adjust your surroundings and cope and get through things, learn new skills, learn new um, tactics to survive, find resources to help you to survive. If you can't bring yourself to do that, you're doing yourself a disservice because when things do change and they will, you're gonna be completely caught off guard. Like Corona, this is a great example. You know, people who have, people who've been struggling in the hood and the projects, 
I feel like those people weren't as badly hurt by this because they're so used to living on a low income and uh, very little resources that it's just a small adjustment they have to make. And if anything, some of those people are probably financially better right now than they were before Corona happened. So <laughs> it's about adjusting, you know, but if you come from very, very high up, you know, and then this happens and it affects your finances or your living situation. Wow, like those people are really struggling, you know what I'm saying? And, but not just struggling because they're going through it. I mean, like mentally stressed, anxiety. I'm hearing stories about how right now the mental health industry is skyrocketing with new patients because people have straight up like PTSD trauma from the stuff that's going on. I learned this lesson early, early on in my life and that is what I think has been able to help me to deal with a lot of situations that when I talk about it, people are like, how did you survive that? How did you get through that? Oh my gosh, like I don't even believe that you aren't crazy right now. There's no proof that I'm not crazy, but I'm just saying people think I'm not. So the reason I'm able to keep a straight face and not have a nervous breakdown is because I have learned to adjust and that it's not the end of the world. It's not my ideal situation, but it's temporary. That's what I always tell myself when I'm in a situation that seems like dire. I just remind myself it's temporary. I've gotten out of it before and I will get out of it again. A door will open, a wave will happen, something will rearrange itself so that I can get back to my standard. Um, so this is a very, very important piece of advice. Okay, and then the last thing I want to talk about is her advice to accept all gifts. This is actually not really something that is unique to my mother. I actually have been taught this mostly due to my culture, like the Korean culture. In general, everyone doesn't follow this rule, of course. But in general, there's like a belief that if you, if someone offers you something, you accept it and be grateful for it even if you don't need it because if you turn it down or reject it, then you may never be offered anything else again later on when you really do need something because people might think, well, she's too good for help. She's too good to accept charity or, you know, a gift. So... I'm not going to insult this person by offering them anything later on down the line. So even if they think you, that they hear you saying, oh, I'm stressed, I'm struggling, whatever, like they're not going to want to help you or interject because they think, oh, she's got it taken care of. This is a little, little bump in her road. That is something that has helped me many, many times in life because um, I've had people give me stuff that I didn't need. I had somebody give me a, a, a freezer that I didn't need. And it was taking up all the space in my house. And I was like, what am I going to do with this thing? But thanks anyway. And then um, something happened. And I really needed like an extra couple hundred bucks fast. And I didn't know how I was going to get it. And then I was like, oh, snap, the freezer. I sold the freezer in like two hours of listing it. It sold. And I was able to take care of the thing I needed to take care of. So even though she didn't give me money and I didn't need it at the time, later on down the line that gift turned into something that helped me out that's just one example but like you know it doesn't have to be a, a thing it could be advice it could be a ride it could be an invitation to something but like for the most part i try not to turn down gifts or help or charity from people even when i don't necessarily need it because um it's just the energy of like yes openness and receiving that I like to always keep going, I guess. And it has, I think it's been useful in my life for sure. I don't know, in American culture, it's a little different when people offer you stuff and you don't actually need the thing. Even if you do need the thing, a lot of times Americans will just turn it down to be polite, which I think is weird. But <laughs> like if I offer you something, I clearly, I can part with it. That's why I'm giving it to you. I'm not gonna give you something that if you take it from me, that's somehow gonna make my life worse. So why would you not take it? Meanwhile, during Christmas time, even though you don't actually celebrate, like even if you're not Christian, you'll you'll justify celebrating Christmas and spending all this money you don't even have. I've seen people spend money on credit cards, max on amount to try to get Christmas presents for their family members and friends. And that is okay in our culture, but just accepting a gift from someone is like considered weird or strange or uh, impolite. I don't get that, but <laughs> I don't do that. I don't want Christmas gifts. I'd rather not take the Christmas gifts over 
all year round gifts. You know what I'm saying? If I had to choose, um, but whatever. So, yeah, so that's basically um, the four uh, lessons that I have learned from my mother that have actually helped me in my life, and I'm glad to have learned these these lessons because I actually passed these same lessons down to my own children and if i feel like it's been benefiting them the things that they can actually um apply so i hope that helps someone and if you liked any of the information that i shared go ahead and like the video and leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions or requests and i will do my best to uh, get to those for you guys thanks so much for watching today and i will see you guys on the next video and i hope you will consider revisiting anxiety apps